Have you ever fought an enemy team that feels like no matter how you push, no matter how you flank, no matter what you do to try to be aggressive, you are just getting shut down before you can do anything. It feels like you're hitting a metaphorical wall, a brick wall, except instead of it being made of brick, it's made out of lead, and the lead is flying at you very fast and very frequently. Well, more than likely, your enemy team is playing the exact same type of play style that True Vanguard favors to play. This play style is known as the Gamma play style. It's one of the four main wolf pack roles that we have in Dream Team. We're going to talk about all of that here, and we're going to discuss how you can improve your Gamma, as well as what it is and how to identify it and beat it. Welcome back, Guardians, to another Dream Team video. I'm your humble host, Misum777, and I want to throw this out here before we get even a lick further into this. So I wanted to say, if you're not familiar with what we mean when we say wolf pack rolls, I recommend that you pause the video right here, go into this, the description, and find the very first linked video. It will discuss the very basics of wolf pack, analyzing Astacross, True Vanguard, Frostbolt, and Cami Cakes. It'll help you get the basics of what it is we're talking about here, because we're going to throw out some terms that may not make a lot of sense unless you're already familiar with it. We put out a subscriber poll and asked you guys what you wanted to see as the next wolf pack roll, and you guys voted Gamma. Betas and Omegas, they were close, Betas being very close, but Gammas ended up winning out. And I think I know why. Statistically speaking, most players are actually Gamma players. In fact, most of the people that we end up taking into Dream Team start out as Gammas and then eventually evolve into something like an Alpha, Beta, or an Omega. And there's a good reason for that. But before we get into that, before we get into the whys of Gamma, let's talk about what Gamma is and maybe catch some people up who have ignored my advice of clicking on that video link. So, a Gamma is a defensive style of play. It is primarily focused. Its number one goal above everything else is to take up space. Whether that be as a team or by itself, its entire focus is that area control and zone denial. By our definition, we have a definition within the Wolfpack itself with like written down. The codified Wolfpack for Gamma is mid-map, staggered right to the Alpha or to the Beta. It primarily focuses on, like we mentioned, zone control and defense. It supplies suppressive fire and support abilities, and it supplies a safety zone for the rest of the team to regroup upon. If you were observant, you would have caught that we've kind of talked about two sides of the same coin for the Gamma for this defensive style. There's the support side of Gamma, and then there's the control side of Gamma. And really, I think this comes down to whether you're playing as a team or you're playing by yourself. They both essentially accomplish the same thing of taking up space, but support will be much more focused on helping your team control the space, whereas control is much more focused on you specifically shutting down and controlling that space. A Gamma focuses on consistency in damage and area denial. He's constantly checking for flanks to make sure that his team is not going to get pushed from an angle that he's not aware of, as well as supplying ample amounts of damage to the front line as necessary. If a team is starting to, if your team is starting to push into a zone, the Gamma is throwing some extra sauce down that lane in order to help them finish fights out. Or if they're playing more on the defensive side, they're maybe not being on the aggressor side right now you're focusing on helping out your Omega play defense. You essentially operate as a sort of pivot. You set up a particular area where your team is able to operate off of. You're able to get some hand in the fight, not directly engaging yourself 100%, but you're keeping some tabs on the fight. Your team is able to pivot off of you and go about what it is that they're doing. With your suppressive tools, this makes an excellent safety blanket for people who need to heal, fall back, reload, whatever it may be. Gamma is purely focused on countering aggression. They're philosophically opposed to the alpha role. The alpha role is all about getting in, getting close, and killing things before they get a chance to do anything. It wants to be in people's faces. Gammas want the exact opposite. They want to keep things at arm's distance and shut things down before they're able to get in close and kill the rest of your team. Like mentioned at the very start, a Gamma can be absolutely oppressive to go against. A really good group of Gammas is just annoying to fight against, especially somebody like myself who plays Alpha primarily. I hate Gammas, not just because they counter me like in terms of what it is that they're doing, but it's because it is so hard 
to bust them out of it from an alpha's position because, again, they counter me. Similarly, gammas operate as a sort of force multiplier. If you've got a good team and you've got a good gamma, that team will explode as opposed to if those two were separated. If you have just that good team by itself without that particularly good gamma, that team will do okay. Combine that with the gamma and that team will suddenly do really, really, really well. That's because of their supporting tools and their ability to maintain that sort of safety blanket for their team. Let's talk about the how of the Gamma. You might have picked up some of it here, so we're not going to get into too much detail, but I think it's important as informative for you guys in order to talk about some of the hows of Gamma. The very first thing I want to talk about is weapons and general loadouts to look for. Like mentioned, you are looking for consistency. You are looking for things that give you the ability to consistently supply damage down a lane and down a zone. You're looking to be able to shut off areas well. Not necessarily instantly, but just overall. You'll generally find a good metrics of success is how long can you hold down that lane. So things like fully automatic weapons, such as auto rifles, pulse rifles, things that are good at countering aggression as well, such as sidearms, fusion rifles, both sides of the gamma are fantastic in order to include in your build and your mixture of gamma that it is you're going for. Of course, you can mix in some support tools as well, so things that buff your team, heal your team, etc. If you're playing a more traditional, like, role-based thing, such as like Overwatch or something, you might find it important to run some type of healer, right? You have to have some type of healer, and that's where the Gamma can come in as well. Try not to mix it too much. You might find yourself trying to hybrid too much with, like, defense and healing type Gammas, but you'll find that you won't be able to do any one of those things terrifically. Nevertheless, if you find it works for you, go for it. In terms of general positioning, you are behind the alpha and to the side of your beta. You're essentially like a like a weird twin brother to the beta. The beta is more focused on more aggression, you're more focused on defense, but you share the same engagement space. You both are about mid-range and you both are in that area where you're able to supply a sub, a swap, a cycle, what we call a cycle swap for somebody else. You can sub out for your Omega if he needs to pull back or push forward or set up a new zone. Sub out for your Beta if he needs to heal up for your Alpha if he's having a difficult time setting up that push. That's generally where you'll find your positioning. You should have a decent line of sight of both your Beta, Alpha, and your Omega at all times. You are right at the heart. You are the lifeblood of the team. If you're too far out, you need to pull yourself back. Unlike every other role, you are defined by the movement of your team. And sometimes if you're good, you can dictate where that movement is by how you're setting up your defense. Gammas do well in a tactic we call Alamo, which we will talk about in a later video. But the gist is that when you're setting up a defensive zone, the Gammas are the primary tool to do it. Alamo being a defensive tool in general, like I said, talk about in a later video, you set up that Alamo in an area, Gammas will be the main like the, the gears, the cogs, and everything that make that Alamo work. You're able to be the best tool at being that defensive option and controlling that space. If you're being aggressive, when we what we do what's called a full dive, you are the thing that's essentially pushing forward on the stick and holding the trigger down, supplying a wall of lead to anywhere where your alphas, your betas are pushing, literally shooting if there's no friendly fire, literally shooting and suppressing an area that the enemy team is trying to assault your front line from. If you can just give your, your front line just a little bit of space, that little crack in order for them to get in, as well as providing them a fallback option, let's say that your alpha pushes in, he says, nope, it's not working for me, you can provide him with that pullout tool in order for him to regroup and maybe try it again, or maybe you have to reassess what it is you're doing. You give that option, literally supplying suppressive fire in an area and slowly closing out that area so that your alphas and betas can close it in is 100% fantastic from an alpha player. I love it when I got a gamma who is right behind me and is shutting things down that's trying to flank me or is just generally supplying lead in the direction that I am going. Another crucial tactic to understand is the suppressant flank. Sometimes you'll be in a situation where a team is also setting up a really good defense. You need to do what's called a suppressant flank. Now, 
Again, we're not going to go into too much depth of it here, but the gist is that you're going to be the primary thing that is pulling attention away from your frontline flankers. It is important that you supply enough attention grabbing aggro and damage to make sure that that flank goes well and then be ready, fast and able to pinch in when the flank is called. As soon as that flank is called, be ready to go and close out and pinch the fight. Make sure that you maintain your health advantage, making sure that you just generally keep their attention. You don't even need to be necessarily getting damage on things. All you have to do is get their attention off of that flank. Lastly, let's round this out with some things to avoid. Some common pitfalls that I see with Gamma players, and we, like I said, we see a lot of them, so I've got a good amount of data on you guys here. First and foremost, don't be discouraged at the scoreboard. I see a lot of the times where some Gamma players will get in, they'll play really well, they'll play like a really solid Gamma, and they don't show up at the top three of the scoreboard, and they're discouraged. Don't be. Gammas are one of those roles that aren't necessarily going to show up that well. Shutting down a lane doesn't show up on the scoreboard, unfortunately. Now, on more open type situations where life and death is really like crucial, gammas will absolutely be thanked. But in more chaotic situations like 6v6s, it might not show up. Don't be discouraged. If you're looking for a specific stat to look for, check out damage. If you're dealing a lot of damage, you're probably doing a good job of being a gamma. But if you're not showing up in the top three of that scoreboard, eh, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. As long as your team wins and as long as you're supplying that force multiplier, you are doing your job. Another thing to keep in mind as a Gamma player, avoid being fearful. If you've got another team that's trying to aggress on you, you have to be able to meet their aggression. Be able to get up to them and help shut that down. Don't hold back too much that the enemy team is able to push up on you. In fact, more than likely, unless the situation requires it, you should be trying to take a stand on whatever point you've decided is your defensive zone. If you decide, I'm going to lock down the heavy ammo spawn, and the enemy team starts to push you hard, unless you can find a more suitable alternative, or lives are incredibly important, and you think you can get some backup, hold your ground. Especially if your team is in front of you. If you get scared, people will die. Make sure that you, you know, gird your loins, as it were, <laughs> and set up in an area and make sure you give them the middle finger and say, come and take it. On a different side of that, be careful not to be too idle. If you're not engaged in the fight, and I would say at least 70 to maybe 90% of the time, you probably are too far back. Gammas need to take up space. A good analogy would be a wildfire. A wildfire consistently sweeps over and consumes. You need to make sure that if you're playing Gamma and you're not engaged in suppressing or holding defense, whatever it may be, that you need to get into the fight a little bit more. Again, not being aggressive, but just essentially rotating where it is you're setting up defense just a little bit closer. You need to make sure that you maintain line of sight of your alphas and betas as well, right? So if you're essentially just sitting there with two marshmallows with your omega and nothing is happening, you probably need to rotate forward a little bit. But that is the gist. That's everything I've got to tell you. Be sure if you have any questions to leave them in the comments down below. I have them sorted by, uh, by most recent rather than by top so that the questions I can see will be a little bit more readily available for us to answer. We have plenty of us in Dream Team who will be willing to answer your questions as well. You might see some of us in there. Uh, they can more than likely verify themselves as being a Dream Team member. So be sure to, if you have any questions, leave them down below. If you play Gamma, I would love to hear what some of the builds that you end up running, or if this helped you at all, maybe some tactics or something else, help out your fellow man, right? And like I mentioned at the start of this video, be sure to subscribe. It helps us a lot. We're still a very small channel. We just broke 2K subs. We're probably going to do a subscriber special coming soon. So be on the lookout for that. If you would like to join us in our Discord community, the link is in the description as well. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you want to see more of this, be sure to vote on the subscriber poll. Yeah, it's the only last two. We've got Beta and Omega. Those are the only two that are left. So make sure that you vote on which one you want to see first. I'm sorry if this video took a little bit longer. We had a whole bunch of stuff happen that kind of prevented us from doing this. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Like I said, hope you guys enjoyed. Bless your faces and deuces.